Well, what you're looking at there is a beautiful thing. We got us a uh, converter that we're putting back on the Envoy after someone cut the other one off, after it set in the, uh, I guess, the storage yard for quite some time before it came up for auction and before I bought it. But uh, here's a new one, $120. We're going to put this on today. I'm really interested to find out. Just, you know, I mean, it's fairly large, but I guess maybe it'll do its thing. It's not California or New York approved. A lot of these, when you buy, you got to read to fine print on eBay. So, I'm never going to California or New York, so the car is registered in a state where we don't have to do emissions. But, it should work. i got the O2 sensor there and all that. So, they sell these on eBay. Uh, dealers, I got it in a couple, I got it in about three days. So, it says it's made to fit right on there. It's a direct bolt on and uh, all that. So there's a quick look at that. Let's go inside real quick. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna be putting this on this envoy. It's a 2006 that I picked up and it runs great. Uh, they just had a piece of pipe on here, flex pipe when I bought it. Cause they didn't want to put any money into it. And now here is where we're at. I had to get these bolts out on the top there, so I had to do several things before I got all three of them out. I got one just kind of in there right now, just so I could take this whole unit out uh, on camera. But I did try lots of different things. I got lots of sockets out here and everything. I found out what works really best is to take a Dremel tool. Yes, a Dremel tool, something like this. Now, I did run out of the other wheels. The other wheels now are so expensive. Uh, three of them, it's like $13. You used to be able to buy a 10-pack for like $4.99. But I made these here work. These are the ones that got the little screw in that you have to take off. Kind of, you know, a little more involved. But uh, the one I had that was working, what's left of it, uh, is in there. It's pretty much shot. So what I did, I took the cutting wheel, put my hand up in there, and kind of got rested. And <laughs> here are the bolts, that I, the nuts, I should say. That I tuck out. Now what I did, I sliced the side of the nut right up next to the threads. Try not to cut the threads too much and not quarter this off. And when you do that, this will loosen this up and you can get these off. Now this one here, believe it or not, uh, after I worked on it for a few minutes, I, my bigger wheel that I had an air compressor on, well I didn't have enough air pressure to run that. So I basically stuck with this here. And uh, I gave up and I thought, well, I'll take my tool and see if I can zip this off. Actually, I zipped this off pretty easily. So the other one that was on there right now on the manifold that's sticking down, it's at an angle, so it's really hard to get a socket on there. And that's the one we're working on right now, and I'll show you how I got that off. Basically, I did the same thing. I stuck the Dremel wheel, wheel up in there, pull, and cut the side of the uh, nut off, and oiled it up, and eventually got it off. And these aren't a very big bolts but i tell you what when they get uh welded on there with the heat and stuff after years and years of use they get really hard to take off and these have the flared washer on the bottom it's all one piece so let's go into the car real quick so the main thing was i didn't want to have to take the manifold off just to get these three bolts off right here that hold this pipe on so uh as you see i have lots of room here because the converter is actually gone and if you're going to do this and you need to replace your converter I just cut the pipe off there and cut it off back here somewhere and just throw it away and get it out of the way. Then you can get in here and do some work. So what we're going to do is stick my hand up in here. Bear with me a second. And we're going to get this nut off up on the top, which is, if you can see it or not, it's the one that's kind of hard to get to. It's at this weird angle right there. And like I said, I've already got it. I did all the work off camera. It took me probably an hour just to get this because they don't want to damage the threads too much. And I still got threads and there's our nut. Take it off and look at it here and see what we got. See I cut a good slice into it. Well, hopefully you can kind of see it there. And that's how I got it off. So you got to kind of judge your wheel right up against that stud to figure out exactly where it's at. But even if you do damage the stud a little bit, the threads ain't going to hurt anything. Now... <laughs> Ta-da! We get a better light up here. Wish I had more light. So that now we can take this whole thing out in one piece. Oh, I'm so glad to see this gone. Hey, there's a donut gasket there. I didn't have to do it. 
didn't think there was one. And now we can throw this thing out. Alright, so I didn't get that with the uh, exhaust system that I just bought. So that's good. Uh, it's in good shape too. And up there is what we got. So that worked out really good. That's how I got this off. Um, there is enough room here. But the problem, what you, what I would do first is try to get your 15 socket on there. you got to use a 6 point. A 6 point. Don't even try using a 12. You'll round it off. Get your 6 point on there. And if you can't zip it off with one of those guys right there, that little electric gun I got there, um, you've got to hold it on there. you got to use one of these right here directly to the gun so it doesn't vibrate. And this is not even right. What you need to do is just put a 15 socket on here and directly to the gun because you don't want a bunch of flex uh, extensions on there because it will flex and jerk and all your torque is not going to go to the socket and all that. And having said all that, even if you can get this converter out and somehow get a saw saw blade up through on the outside, stick your blade in through here on top of the frame and cut this pipe completely out, you will have a lot more room than I did. I should have done that first. And you could probably get a socket directly on there and get your uh, impact tool or whatever and use a, one section of this extension and uh, put a socket on there and really get that off. I should have done that first, but uh, the bolts that came out easy was this one and this one. This one here is up a little higher because it hit, it's at this weird angle and part of the transmission housing hits it when you're trying to go straight at it. So uh, once you get in there, get all that out of there, you can probably get that bolt a little bit better. But hey, it's out. The main purpose of the video is to go ahead and put this converter in and the pipe and all that. Pretty simple to do now. I am going to have to go out and buy me some new bolts and whatever, uh, nuts I should say, put on those studs. Now whatever you do, put some uh, anti-seize on these, you know, help a brother out <laughs> for the next job if you have to. So we're going to go to the farm store and see if we can find something like this. These are 15 and these are, I think, eight. well, I'm not sure what these are. They're not fine coarse threads, I don't think. Uh, yeah, they are. I think they are. But, but anyway, I'll go find a three of those. For this in here, and the pipe already has the two that I need back here on the back, and I'm going to have to flip my white around again, which is over here. And I, I have something just temporarily in her right now. This whole thing's loose, so all i got to do is take that out. Pretty simple hookup, and you got your bracket there. And uh, screw my O2 sensor in. So uh, I'm excited to get this on. This thing is going to sound so much quieter. Of course, all my framework that I did on the other video, I'm happy about that. Worked out pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and head to the farm store and see if I can find some nuts for that. And we'll start putting this on. All right, we got some nuts at the uh, parts store. $4, uh, about 5 bucks for five. Uh, I mean, there's three of these for about 5 bucks. These are 386-16s. The heads are pretty, pretty uh, much the same. These are a little taller, but these here probably just a little less, but the threads are the same. So we got everything, and my uh, the converter came with this gasket back here, and the two stud bolts and all that. So that will work out pretty good. So we'll go ahead and get this on here, and we'll start it up, and make sure we have no exhaust leaks, and uh, go from there. Hey, let me know where you're watching from right now. All right, seventy-nine cents worth of farm store bolts, or the tractor supply place, and uh, these are three sixteenths. We'll use those up there on the manifold. All right, so that idea is not going to work because if you look up here to the top, if I can get the camera a little closer, I got the threads all chasing her thing, and, and those nuts go on there. The problem is, well, the way they designed the uh, converter, they how they sent it to me in one piece. Well, it's designed to use their bolts, meaning you still got to get those studs out because. <laughs> Well, here's what I took off, and you can see how this goes clear up on here, and it's beveled in here. It's got a nice little bevel, so this is allowed to get up here really far, and my studs actually stick through these bolt holes probably over a half inch. Well, the way this is designed, well, it doesn't go quite all the way up, and look at that. You see the difference in between the two? I need studs that extend at least another half inch through here, and it's flare. And this one doesn't even have a bevel on the inside. It's just, you know, cut, designed that way. And I can see where they probably had some kind of a problem because they welded this other piece on here. So they, I, I don't know what they were thinking. Maybe they realized this was supposed to be on here. And they said, no, we'll just put this piece on here and give them some extra long bolts. But uh, the downside is pretty much going to have to take off your manifold and knock those other ones out. I mean, I could try it down here, but if I snap one, I still got to take off 
the manifold to get it out. So I might as well just take the manifold off to begin with and all that. And of course, the gasket fits in here okay. It's not a problem. The problem is the design of this flange uh, bracket here. So, uh, yeah, that's what I gotta do. I, I could have just cut the pipe off, put a sleeve in here, and somehow fix this, but there's no point in cutting this perfectly good converter. So, my answer is just go ahead and take off the manifold and do it right, which I should have probably done first, but hey, that's the way it goes when you're working on vehicles. All right, well, let's just do that then. So the main thing was I didn't want to have to take the manifold off just to get these three bolts off right here that hold this pipe on. So uh, as you see, I have lots of room here because the converter is actually gone, and if you're going to do this and you need to replace your converter, I just cut the pipe off there and cut it off back here somewhere. And just throw it away and get it out of the way then you can get in here and do some work so what we're going to do is stick my hand up in here bear with me a second and we're going to get this nut off up on the top which is if you can see it or not it's the one that's kind of hard to get to it's at this weird angle right there and like i said i've already got it i did all the work off camera it took me probably an hour just to get this because they don't want to damage the threads too much and I still got threads and there's our nut take it off and look at it here see what we got see I cut a good slice into it well hopefully you can kind of see it there and that's how I got it off so you got to kind of judge your wheel right up against that stud to figure out exactly where it's at but even if you do damage the stud a little bit the threads ain't gonna hurt anything now <laughs> ta-da get a better light up here wish I had more light so that now we can take this whole thing out in one piece. Oh, I'm so glad to see this gone. Hey, there's a donut gasket there. I didn't think there was, didn't think there was one. And now we can throw this thing out. All right, so I didn't get that with the uh, exhaust system that I just bought. So that's good. Uh, it's in good shape, too. And up there is what we got. So that worked out really good. That's how I got this off. Um, there is enough room here, but the problem, what you, what I would do first is try to get your 15 socket on there. you got to use a 6 point, a 6 point. Don't even try using a 12, you'll round it off. Get your 6 point on there, and if you can't zip it off with one of those guys right there, that little electric gun I got there, um, you've got to hold it on there. you got to use one of these right here directly to the gun so it doesn't vibrate, and this is not even right. What you need to do is just put a 15 socket on here and directly to the gun because you don't want a bunch of flex uh, extensions on there because it'll flex and jerk and all your torque is not going to go to the socket and all that. And having said all that, even if you can get this converter out and somehow get a saw saw blade up through on the outside, stick your blade in through here on top of the frame and cut this pipe completely out, you will have a lot more room than I did. I should have done that first. And you could probably get a socket directly on there and get your uh, impact tool or whatever and use a one section of this extension and uh, put a socket on there and really get that off. I should have done that first, but uh, the bolts that came out easy was this one and this one. This one here is up a little higher because it hit, it's at this weird angle and part of the transmission housing hits it when you're trying to go straight at it. So uh, once you get in there, get all that out of there, you can probably get that pull a little bit better. But hey, it's out main purpose of the video is to go ahead and put this converter in and the pipe and all that. Pretty simple to do now. I am going to have to go out and buy me some new bolts and whatever, uh, nut, uh, nuts I should say, put on those studs. Now whatever you do, put some uh, anti-seize on these, you know, help a brother out <laughs> for the next job if you have to. So we're going to go to the farm store and see if we can find something like this. These are 15 and these are, I think, eight. well, I'm not sure what these are. They're not fine coarse threads, I don't think. Uh, yeah, they are. I think they are. But, but anyway, we'll go find three of those for this in here. And the pipe already has the two that I need back here on the back. And I'm going to have to flip my light around again, which is over here. And I, I have something just temporarily in here right now. This whole thing's loose, so all i got to do is take that out. Pretty simple hookup, and you got your bracket there. And uh, screw my own two sensor in. So uh, I'm excited to get this on. This thing is going to sound so much quieter. Of course, all my framework that I did on the other video. I'm happy about that. Worked out pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and head to the farm store and see if I can find some nuts for that. 
and we'll start putting this on. All right, 79 cents for the farm store bolts or the tractor supply place, and uh, these are 3 sixteenths. We'll use those up there on the manifold. All right, so that idea is not going to work <laughs> because if you look up here to the top, if I can get the camera a little closer, I got the threads all chasing her thing, and, and those nuts go on there. The problem is, well, the way they designed the uh, converter, they how they sent it to me in one piece, well, it's designed to use their bolts, meaning you still got to get those studs out because... Because... <laughs> Well, here's what I took off, and you can see how this goes clear up on here, and it's beveled in here. It's got a nice little bevel, so this is allowed to get up here really far, and my studs actually stick through these bolt holes probably over a half inch. Well, the way this is designed, well, it doesn't go quite all the way up, and look at that. You see the difference in between the two? I need studs that extend at least another half inch through here, and it's clear, and this one doesn't even have a bevel on the inside. It's just, you know, cut, designed that way. And I see where they probably had some kind of a problem because they welded this other piece on here. So they, I, I don't know what they were thinking. Maybe they realized this was supposed to be on here. And they said, no, we'll just put this piece on here and give them some extra long bolts. But uh, the downside is pretty much going to have to take off your manifold and knock those other ones out. I mean, I could try it down here, but if I snap one, I still got to take off the manifold to get it out. So I might as well just take the manifold off to begin with and all that. And of course... The gasket fits in here okay. It's not a problem. The problem is the design of this flange uh, bracket here. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I, I could have just cut the pipe off, put a sleeve in here, and somehow fix this, but there's no point in cutting this perfectly good converter. So, my answer is just go ahead and take off the manifold and do it right, which I should have probably done first. But, hey, that's the way it goes when you're working on vehicles. All right, so we got our air cleaner out of the way. It's over there. Before I got the air cleaner off, I had a problem right here. These things rust like crazy. Couldn't get that off, so I took my Dremel tool. I had to go in here and cut that in half and to get it off. Boy, I tell you what, maybe this is a bad sign. Maybe it's telling me I should maybe uh, start somewhere else and <laughs> try this. But I'm not. So I've got these two bolts out here, one here for the air conditioning line, one over there. This will let me flex it. I've got a couple connectors here unhooked. I just kind of put this off the side. And now the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is go ahead and get this piece here off. All right, I got the 10 and the 13 nut out. Pull the dipstick out, wiggle a little bit. And uh, just kind of just move it out of the way. You don't have to take it clear if you want to. I'll look at that later, but I think I'm okay there. And now we've got one more big bolt to take out. People forget about this. They pry on this and they break it. There's one long bolt we've got to take out. It's the same bolt that has a little tent on it that holds the uh, dipstick on, I believe. And you can unhook the hose, but most of the time you can just kind of pull it out of the way or just move it back out of the way. That's all I'm going to do for now. That hose, you just squeeze it and disconnect it on the back there. That's how that actually comes off. But I'm not going to mess with it for now. That should be okay if they're right there. All right, so I went ahead and disconnected this. This is actually just pulls right off. Some of these you got to work with this clip, but that is up there out of the way. I've already taken out the bolts of the heat shield, which I'm shocked they all came out. Now, if you haven't taken your O2 sensor out, don't worry about it. You can slide it, slide it off uh, through this. This is a hole big enough to slide this whole piece off. That's what we're going to try to do, just kind of fish it through there. And we've got one bolt in the back, uh, one nut in the back, one there and one there. Uh, 10 millimeter, all pretty easy to get to. And you can see this heat shield is ready to pretty much come off. All I have to do now is wiggle around this dipstick. Now you got to be careful. I'm going to try to get the dipstick out, but if I can get it back far enough to get this heat shield out, I'll be okay with that. I'll have to set the camera down and do that. But um, if I play around with it long enough, I could probably get it together, but I don't want to take a chance of breaking it. And as for the AC line, I basically took a nut out here and took a bolt out over there. And I got me a little bungee cord here going around to the front, just kind of pulling it up out of the way a little bit, which actually helps me out here. All right, so it made a liar LME kind of tight, so we'll go ahead and just take this out. And actually, it came out pretty easy. So I'm going to take this rest of the way out. Sometimes, you know, it just depends. Well, got it ready to come out. Well, at least they made it easy to get into this O2 sensor. Thank you, Chevy. For GMC. All right, so there was that. Yay! So, uh, looks okay. I guess a little black carbon, but not that big of a deal. Now we should be able to go ahead and get this out of here. And I'll set, I'll set the camera down. But the only thing that's kind of holding me up here is this dipstick. But I'll pull it back just a little farther, and I'll try to get it out one. 
All right, I finally got it out. I literally had to... Let's look at it real quick. Yeah, looks pretty decent shape. Uh, a little rusty on the bottom, but... Should we even put it back on? I don't know. We'll deal with it later, but it's not too good a shape. But in order to get it out, you pull this dipstick back as far as you can, and you got to actually fish it up between the dip, dipstick uh, bracket here. Try to get this end up and push this end down, then it'll go up. The dirt are manifold. So what you got to do is take out the 11 bolts, and they're all easy to get to. I probably should have done this right off the bat first. Probably would save me a lot of time I would have had done. Once we get it out, we can uh, cut those bolts out, but uh, it's not cracked or anything. A lot of these end up being cracked and all that. I wish this hose wasn't in the way, but I'll work around it. So we'll go ahead and get these bolts out. And I believe these are all 15, so two in the back, and one's kind of hard to get to, but, and this one there is a little tight, but the rest of them are real easy to get out. So let's go ahead and get this out. All right, so I'm on my last bolt. Seriously, I should have done this two days ago. This would have been done. This manifold took me 45 minutes to take out. Although there are two that broke off. Well, one was already broke off. I don't know what was that, and the other one I did break off. May have to drill those out, but everything else... Pretty much came off pretty decent. They fought me a little bit, or locked tight on these bolts. All right, there it is. Now, let's see if I can grab it with my hand here. Oh, all right, there it is. Let the gaskets fall, wherever you may. Here's what these bolts look like. They're not very big, but uh, typical. So I'm gonna have to probably use both hands to get this out. I'm gonna go ahead and just pull it out. All right, maybe you can see me doing something there. I don't know. Get the gaskets out of the way. I think they're, I think they're kind of sharp. But the strange thing is, the bolt on the back that was broke off already, uh, right here, it wasn't really leaking. That was a quiet engine. wasn't loud at all, so I don't know. Get that. All right, this is probably going to be... No fun. There we go. Get it past the motor mount. And the air conditioning hose. There we go. Oh, ta da! Go a little closer here and see where the damage is. It looks like, uh, for the most part, the camera it looks like this one here broke off right here, and one back here in the back. Is it the top or the back? Oh, it's this one here, I believe. Where's one here? That one? No, uh, that one there in the back, right there. I think you can see it right there. I got one. Two. All right, so anyway, you get the idea. I've got an angle drill. I can put a bit on it. Well, there's the uh, other bolt that broke off that I didn't see. It's back here sitting. I'll get it if I can get it. Come on, there it is. So this one was already broke off before I even got to it. This is the one I broke off. So there's 11 total, so that's good. The two there that's broke off, I can get in there and drill them out. Tap them, probably get the rest of it out. Shouldn't be too big of a deal, but I'm happy about this. So what I'm going to do here, get a light set up for you. I'm going to slice this here, slice it on the inside. Slice it, try to slice it through here just with a thin cutter. Then I've got this stud extractor that you stick on here, and I should be able to get these off. And if I have to, I'll put some heat on here. But, you know, putting a small slice in here on the top of this with a cutting wheel ain't going to hurt it. Make sure you use a thin cutting wheel. Uh, but uh, we'll come back here in a little bit and do it. But for now, it's break time. Notice those two bolts? Well, <laughs> they're slightly bigger than the OEM ones because I had to drill them out and retap them. So, yes, some bolts just slightly bigger. The ones that were in it before were something like this. You can see this. Smaller bolts, but these are a lot smaller. A little small. Well, 
they're just actually they're a little bigger the ones that were in it are just a little smaller but you can see the threads there so I knew I was going to get into a problem because I did not want to put this back together without having all the bolts back in the manifold so now we've done it we got it all back together and uh, boy had everything the problem was down in here getting that drill bit dead center on that stud and when you get them on the stud like that dead center you typically would end up with something like this where you can put something in there and twist it out well it was hard uh, every time I get a drill bit on there it'd walk off the side so I just did the best I could it took me about two days to get it out uh, hour here hour and there on the weekend it's been about a week later so uh, it's done so all we got to do now actually you know they should have put bolts big bolts like that all the way around because this back cylinder here gets all the heat back here by the time the exhaust gets out and everything but uh, it's all set up there and ready to put it back together all because I want to get that converter on it's going to go on one way or another all right let me go ahead and get all this back together and we'll start finishing up No, 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 take that. This is how I get them off. Now I got this guy here, it's a lifesaver, stud extractor. And what it does, as you turn that, these teeth come out and we'll grip this like that. Now I'll just go ahead and put our ratchet on here. And cutting a slice in this manifold is not going to hurt anything. Matter of fact, if you want to put bolts in it, We'll be able to get them out easier later. See just how easy that comes out. See? So like I said, I'm going to put long bolts in it with uh, with no threads here. They're, they're going to be kind of fit pretty tight, but they're just going to be pushed through. And we're going to put nuts on the other end. And if we ever have to take this off again, or somebody else has to, all they have to do is strip the nut off, break it, and everything will come apart. So if you're worried about the crack, it ain't going to hurt anything. But if you want to Fix it to get your welder out and just weld it if you got one. But trust me, it's not going to hurt anything. That's how basically you get these things apart. Sometimes these here, I get my right to get the right ratchet on there. There we go. All right, so we're about off there. Ta da! That's how I do it. So, as you can see here, Slice right down through the just before it starts touching the other side, right there. So that one there I got a little sloppy with, but, but I got it cut pretty good. And same thing with this side. I tried to be as straight as I could get, but you can see that's the whole idea. So now we can stick this on. Yay! All right, everyone. As we're looking at a new day. It's all back together. I worked late in the night to about 2 in the morning and got it all together. I got the uh, exhaust on and everything. Now I did use the, uh, to drill some of these bolts I uh, didn't mention, I did go ahead and use my little air tool that I have. And my compressor, this little thing here, actually ran that okay. And it ran it slow enough where I could actually drill into these bolts and get them out on the manifold. So that really helped. And I want to kind of touch on all the bases and I'll probably forget something to help you guys out. And if you're doing that very last stud bolt in the manifold, this here, it makes it a little bit easier. And I took some of my bits and I cut them in half with my Dremel tool and got in there at the perfect angle and got those out because there's a little shield that covers up the uh, hoses on the firewall. And this uh, kind of gets in the way if you're using uh, something like this. Uh, well, actually it's down here. 
because I bought this thing, I don't know, a while back. It, it's pretty nice, but the problem is it's not a true 45 degree angle. You kind of see it's kind of weird. But anyway, there's not a lot of room for that in there when you, by the time you put a drill bit on there. But other than that, let's go underneath real quick and check out underneath. Okay, and here is the money shot. All the way up to the top there. I don't know if you can see those bolts up there, but you don't have to tighten those to Hercules tight. Once they start crunching a little bit, because you gotta you get that gasket up here, you gotta remember. People were tightening these. Uh, once you get that, those bolts tightened up, those are little 14s. Now, I don't know if you can see my work, how the bolts worked out. Put washers on both sides. Those are just, I think, some generic nuts and bolts. But if I have a problem with it later, they'll knock right out and I can put new ones in them because apparently, Tractor Supply has a bolt, nut and bolt shortage. Go figure, huh? <laughs> what else is going to be shortage? Have a shortage of. But anyway, there it is. It's all the way down, all the way back. Got the O2 sensor in, and all the way back here, I got all this in. So even this was a little sketchy here. Um, I had to get my own washer and stuff, and put on the front. I need one on the back that's tight and it flexes and all that. So you can kind of see that there. Kind of dark under here if I'm laying on my back. But it's done. Thank goodness. This was a lot of work. Only because the two the bolts that uh, I had on that manifold up there were not going to work. They did not send me their bolts. Regardless, if you're going to use one of these, the first thing you want to do is probably go ahead and check that flange and see if it's flared. Like I showed you in the earlier part of my video. If it's flared and it looks like it's going to go up on that housing far enough, with the gasket then your bolts might be okay but anyway the whole purpose of the video except for showing you the headaches that i got into was to see if these uh cats have enough material in them to keep my check engine light off we'll check it after a few days after we drive it we'll hook the obd2 code reader up to it and look at it on the graph and see if it's uh, running pretty smooth and all that or see if the lines on the graph are like jumping up and down all over the place so it's done, and also the framework is pretty much done. So, wow, what a job. I'm gonna take a piece of, uh, I got some heat shielding. I'm gonna put some heat shielding on this frame on this side. I'm gonna have to probably put something up here on this side to keep off the transmission lines from getting too hot from this. Although, I'll probably have to design something a little bit later. But uh, for now, huh, I'm gonna start it up, and I'll see you back here in a few days. We'll check this converter out and see how it's working. All right, it's been about two weeks and we're back and listen how quiet it is. I've got a little bit of noise up here on this alternator. That alternator needs to be replaced because I have a voltage surge at times at low RPMs and it drops off to almost nothing and drops completely offline, but listen how quiet. You can see the new cat down there. Now, I've been testing it. I've got it up to temperature several times, driving around, and uh, so far it seems like it's going to be okay. So, it actually might actually work. I thought it would be a cheapo, but uh, it's kind of cold out here today. And the other thing I need to do is replace the uh, thermostat out there because the coolant temperature, I can barely get it up to about 160 to 70 degrees idling, driving it. It almost goes to 180. This is pretty common on Trailblazers and GMCs. You got to replace that thermostat. It's a whole housing assembly. I have a video on that on my play, in my playlist on my um, Trailblazer list. But for now, I'm looking at the graph here, and I'm gonna bring it back up to idle a little bit. Pretend we're driving it. Once I let off on it, I mean, it's pretty even across the numbers here. We don't have this erratic jumping up and down. That's what you don't want to see. You want to see a nice steady stream of uh, close numbers together this is the O2 sensor behind the cat uh, sensor one uh, sensor two bank one and I have sensor one bank one also so now we'll bring off let off the gas a little bit and see there we go got that nice curve there dropping across that's a good indication if you know you have a good cat so I'm surprised it's actually working, but you know, if anything changes down the road, I'll update that status on my down in the comment section. But you can see now it's dropping off. 
because the temperature of the cat is cooling down a little bit and the upstream O2 sensor is changing fuel mixture a little bit since we're just sitting here idling. So I'm you know, pretty happy with it. It worked out pretty good for me. So if you want to do something like this to your trailblazer, if you have the same problem or if your you know, cat got jacked or something in the parking lot, this is one option you can do. So uh, there we go. And also let's check out one other thing here. And you can see where we stand with the gauges and everything. Uh, the only other codes I have is the code for the uh, insufficient uh, activity circuit uh, heated oxygen sensor on bank one, sensor one. I put a new sensor in there. I'm still getting that code for that, which is kind of a head scratcher. Uh, that's what the computer's saying, and it's got the check engine light on, so that's something I'll deal with. I don't want to drive this too much because I'll end up burning out the cat. I need to get that taken care of, and it's the same thing, 134, bank one, sensor one. And then I got the, then it goes to 134. Then the low speed idle, something weird's going on. The idle will drop down to four or 5,000 RPMs. So right now it's dropping, doing okay. Someone said in some of the forms, it could be the uh, coolant temperature sensor, but I checked on the other code reader. I've got a reading going to the computer, so I do not know what that code is talking about. I need to do some more research on it. Heated oxygen sensor. And so I've got a brand new sensor on. So uh, other than that, uh, we'll take care of those codes down the road. So the main purpose of the video was to make sure that that, that cat was going to work. I only paid $120 for it to put it on the car. It seems like it's going to be doing okay. So I guess that's about it, guys. I'll make some more videos a little bit later on the GMC, fixing some things and perhaps create a playlist for you folks. But until then, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, until my next video, I'll see you later.